You find the people that need to like you, and you help them like you by giving them what they need. And I'm going to surprise you with this. It doesn't have anything to do with your business and what you do. It has to do with them and how they buy. And, we're, and, that's, and that is one of the things we're going to concentrate today is how winnable opportunities work in September. And I'm going to, I'm going to turn this over to Pat Suarez because, Pat, as a former federal buyer, tell me what happens in September. Well, what happens in September is the, if you have X number of dollars allotted to your particular part of your agency, you have to spend all of that money or you don't get as much the next fiscal year. Right. So what has to happen is all of your commitments, all of your contractual vehicles, whether it's with credit cards or if it's with more traditional vehicles, uh, it, they all have to be done by September 30th. Everything has to be signed and and there goes the phone. Just we live in a situation. Yeah. Anyway. Um, anyway, everything has to be signed, and it, my wife just walked in and out of here, and it was she would spend two straight days on September 29th and 30th. She would just literally stay there and be up for 48 hours getting all of this money committed. And so basically, what does that mean? That means you have to start the process of getting your the knowledge of your products to the feds in the June time frame because it's in that June July time frame that they're doing all of the contractual actions they're starting all of the contractual actions and it takes them a couple months to mop those up because if like you're at a command facility like Wright Patterson Air Force Base where we were then you've got bases all over the country in Georgia and Utah and Oklahoma and California and you have to allocate make sure all the money and everything's being allocated properly so you know, the time to start thinking about doing this isn't September 1st. It's actually in in the springtime, in the April-May time frame, right. so you can tell the federal buyers exactly why they need, with their end of fiscal year money, why they need to buy your good or service, particularly products, and and, and get in the door and, and let them know that, yeah, they're blowing money out the door just to spend it. I understand that, but you if you talk them into the notion that, what they're doing will help their agency mission needs, enhance the mission needs, and you're going to find a friend. Oh, absolutely. And, and it, 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 it becomes pounds because here's what happens, and just what you said, exactly right. And by the way, everybody, we don't set this stuff up. I know Pat, and he knows me, and I knew what he was going to say before we said it. Uh, but uh, any money that's not spent may reduce the budget amount for the following year, and that means they lose twice because they don't get to use the money that's out that they have for this year and then they lose it for the following year so this is where we come to a place to say all right how do we help them spend that money now everybody wants to be the person in line to be able to get that money and what Pat said was very interesting there because if if they if you fit in with what they need then you are in a good place to be able to position yourself to win that so as far as if use it or lose it is real. I'm going to reiterate something that Pat just said because his wife, your your wife, apparently was involved in some spending. Up apparently, right, right, Pat? Yeah, I mean, she was neck deep in this for years, and on October 1st, she would sleep like crazy. Yeah, and, they, and, and you know, there's 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 several times when you don't call contracting officers. One is September 30th, <laughs> and one wow. is October 1st. So for for two completely <laughs> different reasons. But anyway, here you go. You got 37,472 contracts, totaling 293,000 per contract, folks. These aren't little nickel and dime contracts we're talking about. Ten, almost $11 billion in spending, all on September 30th, 2010. Now, what does this tell you? First of all, there isn't $11 billion of spending every single day. It doesn't happen. However, on this day, it happens, and not only that, you can expect that it's minimalized competition, it's compressed timelines for being turning those things around. There are times when we've done it, and it, it was a 24-hour cycle. Last year, we had a 36-hour proposal that started uh, on the beginning of the week, and we closed it at 8 o'clock on September 30th, finalized it. So these are the things that happen, all, and it was a half million dollars. So to give you an idea of, of, the, of how those things do. So what does this mean to you? It means 200 to 500 percent in, in, in a spending spike, 
there's up to 50% fewer competitors. So if you're normally in a batch of three or four, that can be down to one or two. And so there's a faster turnaround. In other words, when it goes out, the, the RFP hits, and the next thing you know, it, it, it has to be done in 24 hours. In fact, one of the ones that we missed years ago, it was let out at 11 a.m. on a Sunday. If you think they don't work on Sunday, you're wrong. And, and not only that, so it's a 24-hour turnaround, 11 o'clock on Monday. The, the rep that was responsible for that particular account didn't show up. He had a dentist appointment and didn't show up until 1 o'clock. The, the secretary was off that day, so she didn't see the email come in. And guess what? They lost $125,000 because they weren't there to see it. So those things happen quickly. There's shorter response times. There's a lot more flexibility in the contracting because you can, you're not talking directly to the project manager because that's illegal. But the communication forms that happen between the project manager, the contracting officer, the contract officer, you, boom, those things are happening like wind. And, and those things happen. So it winds up also being much more profitable oftentimes uh, for that and often faster pay because you can get in, you can build in additional components to a contract in last minute because they need to spend the money, you want the money, we want to make sure you get the money. So. What does the user to lose it meaning to the agencies? Watch this. It means maintaining their political turf. Pat said something very, very true. What do you think is happening with all the rest of the other, the, the other uh, Air Force components that were out there? They're vying for the money, too. Why? Because if they get to be able to capture that money, then they get to be able to have more money to spend next year, which increases their political turf. There's a lot less scrutiny from the IG's office. I'm going to leave that alone. Just to let yeah. you know that it's that it, there's a lot, lot, lot less scrutiny. There's a lot fewer responses. Let me tell you something. The contracting officers don't want 30 respondents any more than you want 30 competitors. And they want to do everything they can to be able to do that. It shortens their response time, and they have the ability to turn things over and makes it more flexible contracting for them. A lot of a lot of the regul all the regulations still stay in place. None of the regulations change. However, the dynamics of the situation change. So they may pull it out, put it out for full and open competition, and they post it out on their website. But it's only up there for 24, 36, 48 hours. Well, if you're not looking for it in 24, 48, 36, whatever it happens to be, you're going to miss it, and it will never show up again. I promise you. It will not show up again because come October 1st, if that money is not spent, it is not going to be spent. It's not like it's going to carry over anywhere else. So how does the money become available? Pat said a couple of those things. Unspent money on projects. There's contracts that are constantly being let. They're delayed. They're canceled. They're suspended. Some of those things. We've seen where we, we've had some major integrators this past year that got cracked down on for 8A um, 8A abuse, where they were they were booking things and they were supposed to be giving it to 8As and 97% was not given to 8A. So those contracts got pulled, they got reset. Now if that starts to happen now or to, more towards September, there's going to be, in that instance, it was hundreds of millions of dollars that were all of a sudden no longer allocated because they pulled all the contracts. So there's audits, there's contract refunds that happen as well because uh, the GSA audits folks, so you know when you're in getting your GSA schedule, you have to give the government your best pricing. And if you don't give your gov the government the best pricing, they find out that you didn't, they're going to audit you, they're going to say, okay, then you owe us X amount of dollars. So it's very important that you understand what you're getting yourself into and how to position that, and Pat is an expert at this, and we look out for that as well, to be able to make sure that we're we're putting these these things together so that that um, they do not uh, have that as a problem. Last minute millions uh, are are becoming available, and and it's just a matter of who can get the right job for the right thing. They do want to. They don't want to just spend money foolishly. They want to spend money on things that they really do need, and it could be consulting services, it could be products that could be for next year. They may buy a million dollars worth of pencils and pens or paper that day because they know they're going to use it over the course of the next year and they can allocate those funds and, and spend those accordingly. So the executives identify how much money there is available and drive it down through the procurement process. And that's usually the CFO, controllers, the folks on the, on the, the bean counting side of the organization start saying, oh my gosh, I got this money. And then, they, then it goes out. And guess what they like to do? They like to use existing contract vehicles because it makes it fast. 
Now, for you folks that are on this call, most of you don't have existing contract vehicles, which means it puts you at a significant disadvantage. Does that mean that you should not start? That you got to start sometime, and you're not going to get your GSA schedule before September 30th. So you, you might hang up now, or you might figure out why you shouldn't hang up now. <laughs> but what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what, what we can do in the meantime while you're getting your schedule, or there's other contract vehicles that you have the ability to get to if you have somebody that you know that's willing to work with you. That is more important than anything. And I say it over and over again, is that relationships trump the check boxes. That means 8A, that means GSA, that means that means uh, service disabled, that means everything. If you have a relationship and, they, and you have something that they need, they will figure out a way to buy from you if you're the right person to supply it to them. So how does this affect your company? Your federal strategy should revolve around September, starting with this September. Immediate plan is the position for this year. Absolutely. Even if you don't have a schedule, you don't have a way for them to procure, at least get out there and let them know who you are. And let them know that you're, you're going to be playing. You may be saying, hey, we're in the GSA schedule process. Just want to let you know. And, and because guess what? 60% uh, of the people don't buy off a of GSA. So if, if that's the case, then let's not ignore those 60%. Now, there's a, a lot of those 60% are still referencing GSA numbers, so they might not be using the GSA, but they're referencing the numbers. And, and that's how they get away with being able to justify the pricing that you're giving them. So, so immediate plan is to get position for this year. And your long-term plan is the position for fiscal year 2012 and 2013, looking at the Septembers as those times. The nice thing about now is we'll, we'll talk about it in a minute. Here's what not to do. Don't provide a quote that's beyond their budget. That's the first thing. If they say they got $500,000, that's how much money they got. And they're being straight up truthful about it. It's not like you can nickel and dime them and get to, to 650 or 800 or a million two. You're not going to do it. Get, you got to fit within their budget. And do not have a duration of more than 12 months. That's another way to surely get yourself canceled from being able to work with them. That actually happened to, to me with a company that I used to work with. We provided a proposal. The proposal came out short time frame. We gave them a, a two-year schedule cycle, and we had no chance of being able to do it because they had allocation funds for that fiscal year and that's all they had. So you can, you can get extensions on your contract, happens all the time, and there can be other things that you can put in there to be able to say, okay, if you keep it for this long, then we will wind up doing that. But you cannot give them a proposal that's more than 12 months. So make sure you're in front of them by July 30th. We are fast approaching the time where you can do that. And that's why we're doing this last minute thing to say, hey, if you want to do it, there's good reason to do it right now, and we, we can help you get in front of them by July 30th. And make sure you have more than one person watching for opportunities throughout September. Like I said, secretary's off, rep's off, short-term thing comes in. And uh, oh, by the way, that wasn't a GSA schedule one, guys, that happened there. There was no GSA there. There was a proposal that was in front of them. They had $125 million that they allocated, $125 million. $125,000 that they wanted to allocate. I wish it was that much. Um, and they would have allocated it, and they had it earmarked for us, and we missed the bid because we didn't have somebody there. It was ours. It was our, it was our scope. It was everything about it was ours. So we, it was ours to lose, and guess what? We did our best, and we lost it. Um, and make sure you know what the budget number is. Help them understand the budget. They may, cut, you may, they may look at you and say, are you sure that's all it's going to cost? And what they're saying is, give me something else so that I can write you a check larger than what you're asking me for. Make sure that you know what their budget is. And they may tell you. They may not. They may say, well, I, I think that's a little light. And then you can throw out some other numbers. Well, if we add this and we do this, then it could, it could be 330000 instead of 250000 I think that's a lot closer. So those are the things that we want to make sure. You know your budget. 